Ah, hello, good morning and welcome to today's IELTS speaking live lesson all about the topic of the economy. Very much looking forward to it. We're going to look at vocabulary, idioms, a listening task, some games and fun. Um, I think you'll find it really, really useful. To begin with, let's start with a little bit of this. Hello everybody, good morning. Great to see you. Um, welcome. Very excited about today's lesson. We have an interesting topic all about the economy. Um, you can see, I think the economy is going down <laughs> according to my picture. But who knows, hopefully things will get better. Um, so we're going to talk about this topic today. It's interesting because this morning, right, over breakfast. I was talking to my wife and my daughter and I said, if you were teaching the economy as a subject, what would you teach the students? What language? And they went, and my daughter went, my wife was like, I don't know. And then my daughter said, the bag. I said, the bag? She said, yes, the bag. La Bolsa. Now, because we live in Spain, she goes to a Spanish school and she's learning, she, she's educated in Spanish, although she's fluent in English. And La Bolsa is the stock exchange and she didn't know the word in English. Likewise, my wife said, well, I would talk about Tong Huo Peng Zhang. And I said, what's that? And she said, well, it's, you know, when the prices go up and up and up and up, Ah, inflation. And it's interesting, we didn't know the words the, for the economy. I didn't know in Chinese, my daughter didn't know in English, because it's not things we talk about every day. And this may be true for you, right? You know the idea, but you may not know the words in English. Today, we're going to sort you out and help you with that. I say we me and you helping each other. Listen, let's see who's in the house today. Who have we got? We've got Roreen. Good morning from China. Nice to see you. Zohir is a big fan. Nice to see you as well. Excellent. Great. We've got Shahadat all the way from Bangladesh. Lovely to see you. Um, Sarah says, teach demand and supply. I will today. I will. Amarils, nice to see you. Lovely to see you here. Um, who else have we got? We've got from Dhaka also Anwar. Good to see you. T. We've got Zora from France. Long way away away. And all the way from Thailand. Ting Mong. Great to see you. So many different people. We've also got from Nepal. Nation. Listen, great to see you all. Thank you so much for, for joining today. Today's live lesson. <clears throat> but, 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 but. Today's live lesson is all about the economy, right? We're going to talk about that. Let me just go through what's going to happen today, because some of you may be new. Maybe it's your first time. Um, <clears throat> if it is your first time, welcome. And uh, if you are new, right, um, just let me tell you that I also have a Facebook page at Keith Speaking Academy, if you want to follow it. Um, and also keithspeakingacademy.com is the website that I run. Um, it has lots of information about IELTS. It has all of these live lessons are recorded and there. Um, and you can actually go there. Whoa, let me come over here. <clears throat> if you go over there, you can go and find out. You've got the free live lessons. You can go and download the PDF from there. Um, and any information you want about IELTS, it's all here. And 
You can find out about my online courses as well. More about that soon. If you haven't yet got this free ebook, The Common Mistakes in IELTS Speaking, just put your name and email here and you can get that as well. I ask, excuse me, I do ask for emails so that often with the email list, I do like to send out other free lessons and information about IELTS and my courses. So if you're new, welcome. <laughs> here we go. What's happening today here today? We're going to talk about the economy, right? Um, I'm going to start this class, this lesson, um, talking about vocabulary. So we'll be looking at um, the vocabulary, the common vocabulary, like Tung Huo Zhang Pang, if I remember, inflation, things like that. And we'll talk about acronyms, GDP, things like that. Excuse me. Uh, we'll go on to talk about symbols, right? And different words connected to the economy. This is going to be useful, not only for your speaking, but for your writing as well. And in IELTS speaking part three, for those of you who are preparing IELTS, Talking about the government is a very common topic, right? It comes up in all sorts of topics. Public transport, um, the, I don't know, the, the, the anything, technology, climate change. The government should do this. The government should do that. Talking about the government and macroeconomics is really important. And I think this is going to help you a lot. So we'll talk about symbols like <laughs> my friend here, oink, oink. What's that all about? Why have I got a pig here? I'll explain later. Also, if you follow me on um, Facebook and YouTube, you will no have noticed, you will have noticed, interesting tense, you will have noticed that we've had lots of these things popping up, right? Um, this is actually, it's a new IELTS speaking course. It's really for people new to IELTS. It's launching now as we speak. I'm going to tell you more about that shortly. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to do today as well. Let me turn the sound off. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> How strange. We're going to do a news report, testing your listening skills, right, as well. So we'll be doing that today. We'll also be looking at um, idioms and useful phrases. I mean, this one. Do you know to be broke? <laughs> to be broke. Um, it's an interesting idiom. We'll be looking at a few idioms to help you with your natural English. And we're going to finish up with a game of Kahoot. Kahoot is a game where you will test what you have learned. So no sleeping, no napping. No nodding off in the class. Stay awake, stay alert, make notes because I'll be testing you at the end of the class. So that's it. The lesson takes about an hour and a half, more or less an hour and a half. Um, and that's what we've got in store today, right? All about the economy. Good. Let me just check how you guys are. Zena says, I am broke. <laughs> Hajj says, you're penniless. That's what it means. Exactly. Exactly. As Nassar says, it means to have no money. Perfect. Well done. Mohammed Jamilur, please do not sleep. <laughs> I'll have to kick you out of the class if you sleep. Great. Bukenya, hello. Nice to see you. The best teacher. Oh, interesting, enjoyable classes. Thank you so much. That is very, very, very kind. I do appreciate it so much. Thank you. Great. So listen, let's kick off um, at the very, very beginning. Um, let's have a look at the economy. And I've got a little test for you, right? Um, over here. Warming up. Fill in the gap with one word, right? Just one word. Uh, you can write in the chat um, and just write down one word. For example, the economy, not for example, number one. The economy is not good. I think the rate of blank, right, one word, is going to rise even further. Number two, with high unemployment and little economic growth, we are heading into a blank. 
write down your answers in the chat whether you're in facebook or whether you're in youtube write down your answers we have got some people in in facebook you yen you're very very welcome so i'll give you a i'll give you a minute to write down your answers and i'll give you some nice um some nice classical music So write the number, like number one and the word. There are different possibilities. the number that's good well done i like students who pay attention caroling very good as well ah nice avatar arash mm -hmm. nice Interesting. <laughs> Vocabulary too poor. Okay, excellent. Good. Listen, some lovely, lovely answers. Uh, let's have a look together. We've got uh, the economy is not good, right? So it's a negative thing. I think the rate of, hmm, the rate of is going to rise. Well, a lot of you said inflation. And that, as my wife taught me in Chinese, tong huo zhang peng. You see, the more I repeat it, the easier it is to remember. That's why when I learn a new word, like this morning, I just repeat and repeat every opportunity I repeat. Inflation, which is the rising prices, right? I think the rate of inflation is going to rise even further. Brilliant. That's great. Um, there are other possibilities. People said inflation, 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 unemployment. We had one there. Who said unemployment? You're a star. You're very, you're great. It was Musin. Musin said unemployment as well. Well done, Musin. Perfect. Um, I think the rate of unemployment, employment, uh, is going to rise further. Absolutely. Now, I think somebody said poverty. The rate of poverty. We would understand that, right? But normally we don't say the rate of poverty because it's not a percentage, right? Normally. Well, you can say, I think poverty is going to rise. Yes, poverty will increase or rise or get worse. But the rate of, not really for poverty, right? Inflation, unemployment, yes. And I think... Uh, Oh, okay. So here's another one, a living cost, the rate of living cost. You could say, I think the cost of living, right, is going to rise. You could say that the cost of living will rise. That's okay. But the rate of living cost? No. And what's more, Manvili, it's two words and you need one word. But Thank you so much, because that helps everybody learn the cost of living. That's a good expression, right? The cost of living, which is the, how much things cost, of course. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much, Manvili. That's excellent. Um, so I think these two, inflation, unemployment, are the main ones. Um, number two, most people said recession, which is absolutely right. And that is the word on the tip of everybody's tongue, right? The recession. Everyone's talking about the recession. Um, there are other possibilities. Let me just check. Anybody else? Um, Harmanjit, you've got your test on the 15th of February. You've got two weeks. Practice every day, my friend. Um, 
do, 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 recession, recession, recession. Anybody else? Do anything different? Inflammation? No. I use hum. That's when you have a medical problem. Crisis. That's the other one. We're heading into a crisis. That's good. You could say financial crisis, a crisis. There are other possibilities. And let me go down. Answers at the bottom of the PDF. Of course, you don't have the PDF. This PDF over here, when I finish today, I will edit it. I will make it pretty <laughs> and you can get it on the website, Keith Speaking Academy. Go to the live lessons and you can get it later. So if I go through all down the lesson we've got, here we are. Inflation, unemployment. I think we're heading into a recession, a depression, a downturn or a slump. All of those are really nice words, meaning the same thing, right? That everything's going everything's going downhill, basically. <laughs> everything's plummeting, getting worse and worse and worse. A mess, a crisis. Um, bankruptcy. You don't go into a bankruptcy. You can say, I am going bankrupt, but not go into. So... Heading or going into a recession, depression, downturn, slump, crisis, mess. <laughs> Dana, mess is okay, but it's not an economic term. It's a very general term, but it's okay. Yeah, we're, we're getting into a mess, right? Economic crunch. Yeah, you could say that, Zina. Economic crunch is okay. Uh, economy crisis. Economic crisis right? Uh, now, as let me just help you there, because that is really good. You raise a really good question about the adjective, right? Economic crisis. So talking of adjectives, let's go back and let's have a look at a bit more detail ba -ba -bum, about vocabulary, okay? <clears throat> Thanks for all your answers, guys. Brilliant. So first of all, noun, economy, it's countable, right? Notice in English, when you say economy, we normally, no, we almost always say the, right? And this is difficult, I know, especially for speakers of Russian, Polish, a lot of um, those similar languages where they don't have articles. With this one, it's one of those unusual words. We say the economy. The economy is going well, right? So make sure you put the. Or, ah, if you're talking about one particular economy, right? We have a booming economy. We have a booming economy. So remember that, articles. Don't say, economy going well. No, 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 my friend. The economy, or the economy, the economy, the economy, the, the, e, because it's economy. The economy is going well. Can you say with me? The economy is going well. Notice the stress. D -d 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 -d. The economy is going well. Invite. Thumbs up later. The economy is going well. Um, booming. We have a booming economy. Other words you can say strong. We have a strong economy. Yes, the accent on the strong, right? Stress. We have a strong economy. Robust, great word. Row, like row, a boat. Bust, like a statue. Robust. Not robust, but robust. Robust economy. Yeah, means strong, right? Robust, strong. Uh, the opposite, slow, weak, stagnant. Stagnant, stagnant just means not moving. Stuck. <laughs> but really nice collocation, a stagnant economy. Stagnant. Say with me, stagnant. Stagnant economy. Great. Now, we can also talk about the black economy. And I think in most languages, you have the same thing. The black economy is basically where you use cash 
to buy things so you can avoid tax, right? <laughs> Basically, that's it, right? It's using cash to avoid paying tax. Um, so the black economy exists all over the world, right? A lot of people talk about cryptocurrencies being the black economy because a lot of people don't pay tax. Now, we've talked about the economy as a noun. There is another noun, and this is economics without the. Economics is basically the subject, right? If you go to school, you may study uh, economics, the subject of studying the economy, right, basically. And notice the stray, the strange, the change, right? Up here, the economy, co, economy. Here, economics, 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 economics. That's it. Okay, so notice the stress changes from the second to the third syllable. English makes no sense. <laughs> For example, you can say, my grasp of economics is not very good. This is a lovely expression, my grasp of. To grasp, right, is to take, to hold. But it means my understanding. What a great expression, right? You can use this to talk about anything at all. My understanding of um, the Chinese culture is limited. <laughs> My understanding of wine and a good wine and a bad wine is not very strong. My understanding of English grammar is pretty good. My grasp of English grammar is good. My grasp of wine tasting is weak. <laughs> My grasp of economics is not bad, actually, because I studied economics at school, believe it or not, right? My grasp of, what a good expression, I like that. My grasp of, so just to make it clear, is my understanding of something. My grasp of, grasp of, sounds like a, a Russian leader, Mr. Graspov. My grasp of economics is not very good. Excellent. Let's move on. We've also got the person, an economist, right? An economist. Um, a lot of politicians are economists in the plural, economists. Hmm. Great. <clears throat> now, here's a question for you. Do we say economical or economic, right, as an adjective. What do we say? Economical or economic? For example, this car uses little fuel. It's really economical or economic, meaning it saves you money, right? What's the answer? Let me see, guys. Sarah, thank you so much for your message. That's lovely. Best teacher from Kazakhstan. Sue, so, I'm lack a sense of business. Don't worry, Sue. So you'll um you you'll get there. After today's class, you'll be much better. My grasp of wine tasting is not very good. I try and try. <laughs> yes, drink more and more. Very nice. Great. Um, so it's really economical. Uh -huh. uh, Fabio, nice to see you. Economical. Jane, economical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody's going for economical. Everybody's going for economical. Guys, you are the best students in the world. Great. Economical. <laughs> Okay, it's uh, it's really economical. 
economic exists, right? But economic, as an adjective, just means related to the economy, right? Nothing to do with saving money. So we can say economical duh, 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 equals it saves you money. Um, economic is just related to the economy. <clears throat> I don't like the government's uh, economic policies, policy. Policies, let's say. For example, right? That is just related to the economy. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Nice. Well done, Hector and everybody else. Well done. Top students. Wow. So impressed. Nice. Economical then. My car uses a little fuel. It's really economical. Yeah. So notice the difference. Economical saves you money. Economic is just related to economics or the economy, right? Easy, I think. <laughs> Let's move on. There you go. I've got them there. The economic forecast you could talk about is not so good. That's very true. <clears throat> okay. I love to see love in an eco, eco, econ, <laughs> an economic lesson. <laughs> I love to see lots of love from Bhutan. Thank you very much. I'm going to talk about Bhutan very, very shortly, actually. Bhutan is a very important country in, when it comes to economy. And I'll explain why in a moment. Tashi, you probably know. You probably know all about GDH, I'm guessing. Mike, Mac, we've got, when it comes to economics, right? Um, this is something that I I picked up at school. I, I s chose economics at A level when you're about 16 or 17. And in one of the first classes, the teacher said, so we're going to learn about economics. And there are two parts. There's micro and macro. Now, micro means small, right? Small. Macro means big. So we thought, OK, small economics, big economics. But what does that mean exactly? And really, that's what it is. You'll hear people talking about microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics is the economics around a person or a company. So when we talk about your personal situation or a company's situation, then it's microeconomics. Macro is big. It's about a nation or a country or countries trading between each other. That's macro. So if you talk about countries trading or countries growing, that's macro because it's big. Micro, people, companies. Macro, countries. Simple, right? Micro and macro. So... Here's a question then. Which one is an example of macroeconomics and which one is micro? Just put your answer in. Like number one, inflation, macro or micro. And number two, you choosing to buy a brand. Never heard of it. Don't worry. <laughs> that micro or macro? Tell me in your answers. Let's have a look. Ophelia, lovely name, Ophelia. Mirnawati. Ah. Char, I'm studying economic major. Char, you should be teaching me. <laughs> Menetala. Okay, excellent. Good. Yeah, you're there. You're there.
Excellent. Well done, guys. So inflation, right, is, is macro because it's about the country, at least all countries. And this one is an example of micro. OK. Now, very easy. The thing is, right, I mean, in, in IELTS speaking, you don't need to be an expert. But it's good to know the basics and to know some terminology. You don't have to explain things in IELTS speaking, but now and again, there'll be an opportunity to say something, right? Um, I don't know, you know, inflation is a big problem for us. I mean, it's a big, from a, a macroeconomics point of view, it's a challenging um, problem for governments, right? There may be opportunities to use these words. Speaking generally, it's always useful, especially in my house, at the breakfast table. <laughs> Here we go. Let's move on. Um, I'm going to look at acronyms very briefly. An acronym, if you don't know, is where you have letters and this letters stand for something else, right? So GDP is an acronym. It's an example of an acronym. Can you say that? Acronym. 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 Stress on the A. Ah. A. Ah. Acronym. GDP. The G in English we say stands for. The G stands for gross. The D stands for. <laughs> stand for. Stands for domestic. P stands for product. GDP. Um, again, my wife who's Chinese, says, oh, yes, in Chinese we say GDP. <laughs> I said, what does the G stand for? She says, oh, I don't know. It's just we, we, we use the English acronym. Gross domestic product, um, which is basically, this is the value, the total value of goods produced in a country. Goods and services, I think, if I remember. No, product, boom. I think it's just products, right? It's the total value of goods or items produced in a year in a country. The GDP is, is often, we can say, you know, GDP is, has risen to 6%, which is very good, right? GDP has risen to 6%, or GDP is falling, right? Other words for risen, right? It's rise, climb, increase, If it's going rapidly to rocket, GDP has risen, GDP has climbed, GDP has increased, GDP has rocketed, right? Great. So all of those different ways of saying rise. If you're interested, if you want to say fall, you could say GDP has fallen, has um Decreased, slumped, if it's boom, plummeted. Let's put it in the infinitive, right? GDP has fallen. GDP has decreased. GDP has slumped. Ha! Can you pronounce that? Slumped. Um, what a that is just that's mad <laughs> slumped gdp has plummeted nice okay great good for your spoken english as well as writing both perfectly good now gdp is interesting right oh mini right good gdp has soared yes let's add that one to it soar to soar to soar, nice. Decline, nice one. Negin, thank you so much. We can add that. Decrease, decline. Um, decline is the same as fall or decrease. Slump and plummet are, phoom, are more drastic, right? Just to notice. Drop as well. We can have drop. Yeah, nice. 
Now, did you know we also have GDH? And this is where, this is why I mentioned um, Bhutan. GDH is the gross domestic happiness. H, H stands for happiness. Gross domestic happiness. And this is in the, in the country of Bhutan many years ago. I can't remember exactly when, maybe 10 years ago. Um, they decided to evaluate the country's success, not only by the value of products, the GDP, but by the well-being of the people. So just because you're rich doesn't mean you're happy. And the GDH was created. And in 2012, the United Nations officially launched a report, the World Happiness Report. Crazy. It takes into account, sorry, not crazy, fantastic. It takes into account things like, um, well, the well-being of people, psychological well-being, integration in society. Um, there are other things. If you're interested, you can go to Wikipedia, look up the World Happiness Report, um, and you can you can have a look. I mean, let me let me show you. <laughs> let me show you briefly. This will be quite interesting. <clears throat> Here you've got it right. The World Happiness Report, a publication. It's been going for ages. Um, it tells you a bit about the history. Can I zoom in a bit? You can see the dark places are happier, <laughs> and the the red orange places are the least happy, and kind of the the light blue is, is in the middle. And it goes through, you can have a look through, it tells you 2020 World Happiness Report. Have a guess, who is the ha who's got the happiest? Finland, right? It says the highest GDH, followed by Denmark, followed by Iceland, and then Switzerland, the usual suspects, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Sweden, Norway, of course, the usual places. All of these got the highest, right? GDH in the world. Very interesting. Yes. I wonder how to evaluate happiness. Exactly. You can go here and look in a bit more detail and find out how they do it. So which country is the highest? Well, there you have it. Finland, right? Finland is the highest. Finland is the highest for a lot of things. It has one of the best education systems, apparently. Yeah, they say Afghanistan is in the unhappiness list, indeed, with all the problems that are there. But listen, let's hope it gets better in the future. There we have it. Very interesting, right? GDH. Another one. Oh, yes, the 20th of March. This was interesting. It made me laugh, but which is good, 20th of March was declared the International Day of Happiness. <laughs> what do you do on the 20th of March? Do you go around smiling all day? I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> it's great. I love that. Great idea. ROI. Here's another acronym. Acronym. Do it right. Can you see my hand? Da -da -da. Acronym. Return on investment, right? So when you invest money, you expect to get the money back and more. So how much more you get back is your return on investment, right? I expect a 5% ROI on this investment, right? For example, so your rate of investment rate or return, it's, it's, it's measured as a rate by a percentage, okay? ROI. <laughs> yes, great. <laughs> Fabio says, 20th of March, I look for a live lesson with you, Keith. Ha -ha. <laughs> Love it. Nice. I think I should do one just to celebrate. <clears throat> um, a few more. So a few more words that you should know, right? Inflation, we've talked about. <clears throat> we've talked about inflation. Um, for example, so it, it's good to learn a word, but you need to learn how to use it. So we can say inflation is going through the roof. Do you know that expression? 
to go higher and higher and higher it's a rocket is to go through the roof it's going so high it's gone through the roof of the house it's a great idiomatic expression um, to go through the roof when we're talking about uh, inflation and things like that or, or numbers or rates like rates of interest um, to go very high Ex more than very extremely high so in your IELTS exam you could say inflation it's not only high it's going through the roof and then look up <laughs> when you when you say that um, interest rate is another one you should know the interest rate is how much money how much money um, you pay when you know the bank lends you money you can ask the bank to lend you money you have to give it back and give them more oh, how cheeky the bank takes extra money that's the interest rate right um, so it's how much extra money you pay when you return a loan a loan is money that you borrow so that's the interest rate basically uh, banks are going to increase their interest rates apparently it's the central apparently there's lots of different interest rates right this your central bank has the main interest rates and then individual banks set their own interest rate interesting <laughs> interesting the interest rate is really interesting at the moment banks are going to increase raise yeah their interest rates another expression you should know rate of unemployment we looked at this at the beginning right that's how many people are without a job it's a bit more complicated than that because it, it, it you have to think does it include people who've left school does it include people who are on a training scheme um, people who are laid off there are lots of small definitions that politicians use to change the to massage the statistics <laughs> but basically people without a job the rate of unemployment has shot up there you go there's a nice expression to shoot up to soar we saw this before get it we saw this before has shot up in recent months finally supply and demand because somebody said at the beginning talk about supply and demand supply and demand is well I learned this again this is something that I learned in um I learned oh many many years ago uh, many years ago when I was at school let's go back Ooh, many years ago when I was at school I was a young chap we learned about supply and demand and the teacher said imagine that imagine um, Elton John right how many people can sing and play the piano like Elton John and we said one there's only one exactly and therefore how expensive are the tickets to his concert we said too expensive very high he said yes because the supply one is very low and the, the if the demand is high lots of people want to see Elton John then the price is high so when supply is low demand is high price is high if the supply goes up and the demand goes down the price goes down and he said this is the law of supply and demand great economics teacher great forgotten his name but he was good <laughs> here we go so supply and demand prices will go up because of the law of supply and demand um, so you may want to talk about that excellent the last word monopoly a monopoly is where one business dominates an industry industry 
that's a monopoly. For example, we say to have a monopoly on something. To have a monopoly on. So learn the word, learn how to use it, then practice. British Telecom used to have a monopoly on phone services in the UK. But the British government doesn't like monopolies and it doesn't exist anymore. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm looking at your comments. Any any practice? Mohammad Res in Iran we are facing. This is good. Remember facing, you don't need with Mohammad Res uh, Mohammad Res. In Iran we are facing inflation day by day. I know it's crazy in Iran at the moment. The inflation rate is it's mad. It really is. Um I've got some good news for you later, Mohammad Razi, and everybody in Iran. I'm going to talk about a new course very soon. Let me tell you shortly. So there we are, um, Monopoly. So listen, we've been looking at lots of stuff at the moment. We've been looking at the economy, right? We've talked in particular about vocabulary. And I just want to move on and have a quick look at symbols and words. Um, I realize this is a lot of information. The information is good. Later, you can get the PDF, but later I want you to go back and just practice and practice, right? That's the key, is the practice. Great. So, the which words could you use to describe these symbols? You're not with me. I'm on the wrong page. Come on, Keith, get your act together. <laughs> symbols and words. So these are words related to the economy. Which words could you use to describe these symbols? We've got number one, vroom. number two. I'm not sure what happened, why I've got that dot there. It's a pig. Number three, boom. Okay. In the chat, just write down what you think. And uh, we'll have some nice music. Mosen, I like your uh, comment. It's not true. Listen, I've just, but it's just the tax has changed. Novrus, happy Novrus to those of you in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. What a nice place to stop with Hane 
and a rise piggy bank a fall excellent very very good there are lots and lots of words we can use right here to talk about these um let me just pull up right some words for number one we can say an upturn profit growth um all the, the ones you said increase uh boost boom Profit growth and increase. I'm going to put in the articles to help you. A boost, a boost to the economy, uh, a boom. So there's a, a boom in the sale of um, toothpaste. An upturn. Profit could be related to it. We're seeing increased profit. So these are symbols. These are words that could be associated with those symbols, right? Number two, things like saving, investment. It is a piggy bank. We do call it a piggy bank where you put your coins in as a child to save. So saving, investment, piggy bank, all of those things. And number three, um, again, number three is like going down. So this is related to a recession, a downturn, a slowdown, right? Slow down, a slowdown, one word. Bankruptcy, it could be where you've lost all your money. Um, a crash, we had a crisis last time as well, remember? Let me just bring these up on the same page. A crash, a crisis could be a depression, a loss. All of those are this idea of going down. Okay, fine, good. So let me move on. Just a couple of expressions are useful to know. A boon and a bane. Um, so a boon is something that is good and helpful. A bane, something that is not helpful. So often we use them together. We say, well, th this is good and bad, right? It's Something good, but it's also bad. Um, th this can happen a lot. Excuse me, let me turn around. This can happen a lot when you're asked, to, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's a boon and a bane. It's, it's good and bad, right? Um, for example, if the government sets, I don't know, if the government increases the interest rate to control inflation, is it good or bad? It's a boon and a bane because... Increasing the inflation rate means I can save money and I get higher rate of interest. But it's a bane because my mortgage on my house, I have to pay higher interest. So it's a boon and a bane. It's good and bad. So especially it's about economy, right? If you're talking about the economy, instead of saying it's good and bad, it's a boon and a bane. Boon? <laughs> Bane. Talking about the economy, right? Nice expression. It's a boon and a bane. All the extra work is both a boon and a bane. Because the extra work means it's a boon because you're making more money. It's a bane because you work more. <laughs> Two more opposites, a bear market and a bull market. A bear market is where it's a market where the shares are falling, like the stocks and shares in the stock exchange, what my daughter calls the bag, <laughs> the la bolsa. Um, that's where a bear market, right, is very good. Sorry, 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 a bear market is very bad. A bull market, <laughs> imagine the bull going up, is where the shares are rising. Bull market. Mad. Totally mad, right? So the way to remember <laughs> is the bear goes down. And the bull goes up. Bull market, shares are rising. Bear market, shares are going down. That teacher, Keith, is mad. What's he doing? <laughs> Here we go. Excellent. Let's switch back because... We spent quite a long time on um, vocabulary, symbols and stuff like that, yeah? Let's move on. 
keeping an eye on the time. So recently, you may have noticed in Facebook, YouTube, I was posting lots of strange signs like this, right? And in the end, it was, um, it was what? It was, it was, have I got this? It was all of these. It was things like this, right? We had crack um, and then we had this one and then we had this one and somebody said break, um, tear, part, crack, IELTS part one. That's what it was in the end. Crack IELTS part one. What is that? Crack IELTS part one, my friend, is a new IELTS speaking course focused on part one. And it's launching right now. It's up and it's out there. It's ready. And this is really to help beginners and newbies for IELTS speaking. So if you're new to IELTS speaking, um, or you're just starting to study for IELTS, this will be very helpful. It's a very short course and it's just part one. And did I tell you it's free? <laughs> That's the good news. That's why I said, guys in Iran, I know, free. New free IELTS course, Crack IELTS Speaking Part 1. It's aimed at beginners and newbies. Um, you can find it. It's very, very simple to find. I'm going to just show you very, very briefly how and where to find it. If you go to, do you remember my website? <laughs> Key Speaking Academy, right? And the address is somewhere. Da -dum -dum -dum. Can't find my, ad my address. Okay, never mind. I'll find it later. KeithSpeakingAcademy.com. Um, Go to the online courses up here. Oh no, don't go there. These are my courses. Let me do this in a incognito. Okay, Keith Speaking Academy, incognito. Go to the online courses up here. And then you will now see next to the gold course, you'll see Crack IELTS Speaking Part 1. It's free, so you go in there. Um, it's language and techniques. Basically, this will help you. It shows you what happens in part one. I go through the six most common question types. I talk about what the examiner is really doing here and how you can answer these question types. So you get, there are six main videos. There's a PDF, there's a quiz, um, and you can enroll. Why Keith? <laughs> Why Keith? Good question. Um, you can just enroll here. All you have to do when you go to enroll is you can, if you've got Google, you can go with Google. If you already have a Teachable account, for example, you've bought another course, you can go with Teachable or sign up with an email, right? Um, what's a good idea is if you can put yes to email promotions, if you want promotions and news from me, if you don't, fine. But sign up with email, put your name, email, password and sign up and you'll get into the course, right? Um, and when you get into the course, as I mentioned, basically you'll see it here. This is the course you can go through. It, it's, it's a really nice course. It's not very, very long. It won't take you very long. I think it takes about an hour to go through, but full of really, really useful information. I think and I hope. So listen, that's it. That's a new course. It's up, it's live, it's running um, on the website. You can go and check it out. And hey, it's really for new, for new people to IELTS. If you have the gold course or the band seven course, you don't need this because this you already have in the gold course and the band seven. You have very similar information. Uh, anybody can do the course, of course. But if you already have gold, I don't think you need it, okay? Really for people who are new to IELTS. There you go. That's it. Lovely. Let me see how you're all doing before I move on. Burns, thanks for sharing that. And Sarah, if you could share on Facebook, that would be great as well for the guys there. Message from Negin, from Iran. I've just passed academic IELTS with a seven three and a 6.5 general. Let me give you a... Yay. 
Thank you for having you. God bless you and your family. Love you. Oh, apply for the UK. Good luck, Negan. That's great news. Good luck in the UK. I'm sure you will get in and uh, be really successful there. That's excellent. Good. <laughs> Usman, you made us smile and happy, Keith. Thank you, but you should give this course on the 20th of March, right? Yes, National Happy Day. <laughs> well, listen, you can study the course on the 20th of March. <laughs> Excellent. Good. So let's move on. We've still got more things to do, right? We've got lots more fun to have and lots more learning to do. Let's move on. Um, a news report. <laughs> okay. Let me let me go back. The news. I can't turn myself off. This is the news report. We're going to do um, a news report. This is going to be testing your listening skills. Okay. So let me just share with you what we're going to do. I want you to watch this news report and answer the questions below, okay? The question's quite simple. What is the present rate of inflation, right? Remember? What is the present rate of inflation? By how much will banks raise the interest rate? The interest rate, right? How much are they going to raise it? So you're listening for percentage, right? 6%, 10%, 20%. And finally, what food is mentioned? <laughs> okay, three simple questions. Number one, percent. Number two, how much? The percent. Number three, what food is mentioned? Okay, those are the questions. I'm going to show you the video. Before I do, just give me a thumbs up in the chat if you're ready, just to make sure you're ready. I, I think I'm going so fast. But if you're ready, when you're ready, just give me a thumbs up so that I know you're ready to go. <laughs> Hemel, rest of the course be free. No, no, no. Hemel, I have to live. <laughs> Only the, that's, that's the one free course. The others you have to pay for. <clears throat> Daniela, yes, in the gold course, yes. In the gold course, we have two more live lessons. That's right, yes. <laughs> Maria Dolores from Argentina, right? In Argentina, 90% by year. 90% year on year, right? Great, interesting. I've got lots of thumbs up. Excellent. Let's go. Let's do the news report. Listen carefully. It's a listening activity, right? Three questions. Put your answer in the chat. Let's do it. This is Keith O'Hare from the CBB with the six o'clock news. It looks like we're in for a rough ride as the rate of inflation hits an all-time high of 15%. Many government experts are saying that prices are out of control. It's true, right? I was down the market the other day and the p price of potatoes were up to £4.50 a kilo. Outrageous prices. Unions countrywide are calling for strikes to demand an increase in wages. The government is locked in negotiations with the teachers union, with railway unions, the postal workers, nurses unions, bus drivers. Um, the border control workers, well, I'm not making this up. <laughs> this is true. But little progress has been made so far. It is doom and gloom everywhere. We are in a recession and the outlook is bleak. The Bank of England, um, in its efforts to reduce inflation, is going to raise interest rates again by 0.5%. Whilst this is great news for savers, like me. It's bad for borrowers. It's true, right? If you borrow money, then you have to pay back with interest. If the interest is higher, you pay back more. Some government economists are worried that as a result of the interest rate hike, the interest rate hike, fewer companies will take out loans to invest in their businesses. Fewer people will be spending money. Yeah, because we have it in a nice little savings account. 
And we will go deeper into a recession until the economy, economy, the economy collapses. Dear, oh dear. It's a shambles. It's a complete mess. What a disaster. I wonder, how are we going to weather the storm? Do we have any good news? Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, great. Good. Pasta? What? Why? Okay. Comedian. Masai Graham has won the funniest joke of the year award. And the joke is... Ah. I tried... <laughs> I tried to steal some spaghetti from a shop. But the guard, the security guard, saw me. And I couldn't get pasta. <laughs> pasta? Get pasta? No? It's the same pronunciation. Lovely. This is Keith O'Hare from the CBB, 6 o'clock news. I'll have that for dinner. Oh, is my, my cap? I'm back on. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Cam my mic went off. Uh, here are the questions. What is the present rate of inflation? Okay. We've oh my my oh my oh my. We've got loads of answers up here. We've got here from um, Mohiuddin. Can I get you up here? Oh, you've disappeared. Let me come back. Yes, fifteen percent. He said. Joyce says fifteen. <clears throat> Vang Dang says 1.15. Ah, I, I see what you're doing. Interesting. Ashini says 15. Um, 1.50 percent. Interesting. Right. 15 percent potatoes. Cam, thank you. Okay, I think you're all all agreed. Actually, most of you seem to be agreeing on 15 percent. The answer is 15 percent. It's increasing by 15 percent. Absolutely. Um, by how much will banks raise the interest rate? Karen, you said number two, 0 0.5. Okay, um, 0 0.5. Got somebody else here said 0 0.5. Who else says Anthony says 0 0.5. Excellent. The answer was 0 0.5. 0.5%. <laughs> Absolutely. What food is mentioned? Food. I see some of you have mentioned potato. Fischel says potatoes. Uh, anybody else? Bobo Fond, potatoes. Um, potatoes. Seher, pasta. Pasta. Dina says pasta as well. Spaghetti. How are you spelling spaghetti? That's interesting. Maybe that's the uh, a different way. I think spaghetti is a difficult word to spell. I'll try and get it right in a minute. Natalia, potato and pasta. Okay, the food mentioned is potatoes, pasta, and spaghetti. Gee, is that that's right? Right? If I'm, I think that's right. All Italians, can you just check with me? I think spaghetti is right. Look up spaghetti. Spaghetti. Pasta made in solid strings. There you go. Potatoes, pasta, spaghetti. I mean, pasta and spaghetti is the same thing, but, well, it's the same thing. Is it the same thing? I th pasta, I think, includes different types. Spaghetti is a type of pasta, right? Help me, Fabio. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Good. So well done. You got all the answers. <clears throat> 
Great. We've got a message from Hunger. Mr. Keith, I've been following you since seven, four, seven or eight months. So many things I learned. Lovely. Nice to see. Great. Layla, lovely to see you here. You always stand out from the crowd because you're unique. Thank you so much, Layla. Always nice to see you in the uh, the sessions here. Onion. I don't think I mentioned onions. I don't think so. <clears throat> right. Okay. Now then, that's interesting. But let's take it up a level. Let's make it a bit more complicated. I want you now, right, to watch again and to note any useful phrases. For example, right, for example, we had in there, bum, 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 at the beginning, you may have noticed, it looks like we are in for a rough ride. In for a rough ride means we will have a difficult time. Difficult times. In for a rough ride. It's an idiom, right? We also had, as the rate of inflation hits an all-time high, an all-time high is the highest ever, right? So these are idioms or useful phrases. So let me add here, idioms or useful phrases, not all, and <laughs> make you work harder. Watch again a note, make a note in the chat of any idioms and useful phrases, okay? So once again, just give me a thumbs up when you're ready and we'll listen again. Everybody says, Mina says, I'm right. Spaghetti and pasta are the same. Fabio says, yep, perfect dish definition of pasta. It's like micro and macro economy. <laughs> yes, very good. Uh, excellent. <clears throat> good. Heshala, thanks for your comment from Sri Lanka. That's nice. Excellent. Okay, I think we've got a few thumbs up. So if you're ready, we've got lots of thumbs up. Let's listen again. I'm going to make it slightly easier because I'm going to put subtitles on this one just to help you a little bit, okay? Let's do it. This is Keith O'Hare from the CBB with the six o'clock news. It looks like we're in for a rough ride as the rate of inflation hits an all-time high of 15%. Many government experts are saying that prices are out of control. It's true, right? I was down the market the other day and the price of potatoes were up to £4.50 a kilo. Outrageous prices. Unions countrywide are calling for strikes to demand an increase in wages. The government is locked in negotiations with the teachers' union, with railway unions, the postal workers, nurses' unions, bus drivers, um, the border control workers. Well, I'm not making this up. <laughs> this is true. But little progress has been made so far. It is doom and gloom everywhere. We are in a recession and the outlook is bleak. The Bank of England, um, in its efforts to reduce inflation, is going to raise interest rates again by 0.5%. Whilst this is great news for savers, like me, it's bad for borrowers. It's true, right? If you borrow money, then you have to pay back with interest. If the interest is higher, you pay back more. Some government economists are worried that as a result of the interest rate hike, the interest rate hike, fewer companies will take out loans to invest in their businesses. Fewer people will be spending money. Yeah, because we have it in a nice little savings account. <laughs> and we will go deeper into a recession until the economy, economy, the economy collapses. Dear, oh dear. It's a shambles. It's a complete mess. What a disaster. I wonder, how are we going to weather the storm? Do we have any good news? Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, great. Good. Pa. 
Aston? What? Why? Okay. Comedian. Masai Graham has won the Funniest Joke of the Year award. And the joke is... Ah. I tried... <laughs> I tried to steal some spaghetti from a shop. But the guard, the security guard, saw me. And I couldn't get pasta. <laughs> pasta? Get pasta? No? It's the same pronunciation. Lovely. This is Keith O'Hare from the CBB, six o'clock news. I'll have that for dinner. Oh, lovely, very, very nice, great. So lots of interesting, useful phrases, I think. Let's have a look, right? We said in for a rough ride, right? Um, this means we're heading towards difficult times. I'll just put that like this. I'm going to tidy these notes up later and give them to you. Well, not give them. Yes, I'll put them on the website, right? An all-time high, right, equals the highest ever. So what else have we got? Let's see what you guys are writing. Um, Julia talks about weather the storm, storms, storm, singular, how to overcome obstacles. Great, great. Um, what else have we got? Calling for strikes, yeah, asking for, calling for strikes, good. Locked in negotiations, yep. Increase of wages or in wages, we'll check in a moment. Claire, out of control, yeah, I think the prices were out of control. Calling for a strike, nice, great. I'm not making it up, yeah, when something's true, I'm not inventing it i'm not making it up great nice well done locked in negotiations that's the collocation well done well done um any others doom and gloom yeah something is terrible news very 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 bad doom and gloom um anything else prices out of control you said great um kritika Nice to see you. Outrageous prices. Um, do interest rate hike to increase. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, why not? Dear, oh dear. Oh dear. A shambles. That's a good one. A shambles is a mess. I'll write this down in a moment. Don't worry. Great. Just getting your ideas. Any others? Any others? Payback with interest. Yeah. So when you lend somebody, you say, listen, I want the money back, but pay back with interest. <laughs> to weather the storm we've had, excellent. <laughs> I couldn't get past it, that's the joke, yes. Um, da, 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 da. What else have we got? Prices, railway unions, recession. Outlook is bleak, that's a good one, nice. Okay, brilliant. And then we've got all the jokes about the pasta. Anything else? Good. I'm going to... Okay, there's others. Interest rate, rate hike, interest rate hike. Yep, good. So excellent, good expressions. Let's have a look together. I'll just go through briefly. Um, so we talked about prices are out of control. That means that they are going up or up or up or up either going up or going down, but there's no control, right? It's an extreme case. I was down the market the other day, potatoes were up to £4.50 a kilo, outrageous prices, right? Outrageous prices, which means, um, oh, outrageous, it's just uh, impossible or not. Something's outrageous, it's just shocking, surprising, very surprising. 
or shocking, very surprising prices. Unions worldwide are countrywide calling for strikes. That's a good one. I didn't have that one. To call for a strike, right, is to ask um, to ask for a strike. Ask its members to go on strike. Okay. I'll try and make that clear here. To go on strike is not to work, to stop working. So in case you don't know that, to go on strike equals to stop to stop working in protest. Okay, so to go on strike is when you stop working in protest because you want something. So calling for strikes, demand an increase in wages, an increase in, somebody said of, no, increase in wages. Be really careful with the prepositions, right? Especially because I'm going to test you, remember, at the end of the class. An increase in wages. The government is locked in negotiations, which means uh, stuck, cannot move in the negotiation. Um, this is a collocation. You can say locked in negotiation, locked in discussions, but not anything else. I think those are the two main ones, right? Locked in a negotiation uh, or locked in a discussion. They're locked in discussions. They're kind of stuck. They're not progressing. You cannot say, oh, I'm locked in my seat. Mm, not really, no. So this is really negotiation or discussions, right? Those are the common ones. Then we've got all the different unions. Of course, the unions are the organization that support the workers. I'm not making this up. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Um, so to make something up is to, to invent or... It's kind of to invent or to lie about something, right? Um, to making it's to create a story that's probably not true. You know, to make something up, to invent something not true. Yeah, not not to invent like a machine, but to invent something that is not true or to lie, to make something up. Little progress has been made to make progress. Doom and gloom is just horrible things, <laughs> let's say. Doom and gloom. Oh, it's just it's just horrible. What does does that come up here? Look up doom and gloom. Doom, death, destruction, some other terrible fate. Condemned to death. Doomed to failure. Doom and gloom. A general feeling of pessimism. A general feeling of pessimism. Okay, there you go. Horrible things. Doom and gloom. A feeling of pessimism. Thank you. Pessimism. Pessimism. <laughs> oh, it's double S, right? Yes, thank you. We're in a recession. We've talked about the outlook is bleak. So the outlook is bleak is the uh, the future is not good. So the outlook is bleak. That would be your expression, right? Bleak is just not good. Bleak weather, bleak outlook. The future is not good. Um, the Bank of England to reduce inflation. We've talked about reduce, raise, to raise, reduce interest rates. Um, Payback with interest, we've talked about. To return the money with extra interest. The interest rate hike. So a hike. Now you probably know hike like walking in the mountain. But a hike is an increase an increase um, in 
prices in rates, uh, a hike in price. There's been a hike in the interest rate. It's been a hike in the rate of in unemployment. So if you're talking about um, prices or rates, you can say a hike, right? Which is an increase. An interest, the interest rate hike. Good, right? How you know a word, but you don't know a word. <laughs> now you know a hike is an increase. Fewer companies will take out loans. So to take out a loan is to ask the bank or to ask to borrow money from the bank. To ask for money from the bank to borrow. The idea that you must return the money, pay back with interest. <laughs> Take out loans, to take out a loan. Always remember, when you learn a word, learn how to use it. Put it in a sentence. Uh, we will go deeper into a recession, so to go into a recession. It's a shambles. A shambles is a, is a disaster, basically. A disaster or a mess. A shambles originally comes from the word where they used to kill the animals to eat them. The slaughterhouse, they would kill animals. That was a shambles. Um, but we now use this word to mean a disaster or a mess, right? So something's a shambles. You can say, your bedroom is a shambles. It's a mess. Your notes, your notes, your English notes, they're a shambles. They're a mess. Yeah. Look at your look at you. You're a shambles. <laughs> You're a mess. <laughs> if your clothes are all dirty and old. You're a shambles. A disaster or a mess, right? Nice word, very colloquial, but lovely word to use. Shambles. It's a shambles. The economy is a shambles. To weather the storm is to get through obstacles, as somebody said, to get through obstacles or to get over obstacles. How are we going to weather the storm? You can imagine, right? Weather the storm, get through the storm. Good. I hope, are you still with me? I hope you're still with me. Do you have any good news? Da, 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 da. So just the joke, just to make it clear for you. I couldn't get pasta. The guard saw me. I tried to steal the spaghetti, but I couldn't get past her. Right? I tried to get pasta, but I couldn't get the pasta. It's the same pronunciation. Pasta, pasta. Because when you link in English, the H is dropped. Pasta. It's the same pronunciation. That was the joke. Great. Sue, you says, yes, I'm with you. Great. Shambles always takes an S. Yes, it's a shambles, always with an S. Yes. Your, hand, your handwriting is a shambles. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for that. Who, um, it's an S, right? Always with an S. Shambles. Jing, slaughterhouse, originally. That's the original one. Yes. You're a shambles. <laughs> yeah, use that with your colleagues at work. You're a shambles. Janet, shambles, plural, always plural. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Wow. He's the best teacher in the world. <laughs> Thank you so much. Excellent. Lovely. I love your avatar. So good. We have been through lots of interesting and useful phrases. Um, we've done the news report. We've done useful phrases. What's next? I'm going to go very briefly. Oh, it's Kahoot. Yes. Yeah, because of time, I'm going to go on Kahoot. There are some idioms, but we've looked at them and I will add them to the PDF but now, because of time, let's move on to, um, gosh, let's move on to Kahoot. 
I'm going to recommend something actually with you um, if you're interested. I'll just show you this very briefly because I just realized there was a YouTube video. This is on YouTube, right? Um, why do central banks raise interest rates? The link, uh, if Burns and Upsara, you could share the link. I'll put the link in the PDF. It's really, really simple. It explains things in a very simple way. If you want to learn more about the economy, The Economist is a good place. There's also um, a podcast on the BBC uh, and it's called Understand the Economy. It's with Tim Harford. I'm a big fan of Tim Harford. I actually have his book, Tim Harford Adapt, Success Starts with Failure. He's a British economist, economist, and he does a great podcast called Understand the Economy. You can get it on the BBC. Again, if Burns, you could link and Upsara link as well to the to these different resources. This is also in the PDF, so I'll, I will pass these to you later, right? Just to let you know, we're going to play. Uh, we're going to play Kahoot next, right? So let me just move over here and explain how we're going to do it. If you're new, maybe you're new. Um, Kahoot is a game. There are four questions. You have to choose A, B, C, or D to the answer, and this is reviewing vocabulary from today's lesson, right? So, have you been sleeping? I hope not. Have you been napping, kipping, nodding off? I hope not. We're going to find out if you can remember the key expressions from today. Here we go. So, to play Kahoot, you have to go, let me show you over here. Okay, you have to go to kahoot.it, right? Kahoot.it. Um, enter the PIN 7460388. Again, Burns and Upsara, my moderators. Thank you so much, guys. You're brilliant. If you could just add the link to Kahoot and the PIN, if you write the PIN for everybody, that would be great. 746 0388. Shambles, Fabio. Love it. Great. Karen's in. Monet's in. Ellie's in. So just put your name um, and the PIN number and you can join. What will happen is the questions appear on the screen here. Um, so what you need to do is, is keep watching me. And then on the other tab, kahoot.it or, or on your phone, there's an app. Actually, you can get the app on your phone you get the choice A, B, C, or D. It's actually colors. I can't remember the colors. You choose four colors, choose the right answer, and that's it. Okay, I will read out the question, right, just to, to help you. Florina says, it's too interesting to fall asleep. Good. Who would imagine econ... <laughs> Economics, difficult. Economy, economics. Who would imagine economics would be interesting? Well, great. Let's see how Kahoot is doing. Um, are you all in? How many people are in? You've got 90. Let's make it a bit smaller. Got 100 people. Wow, that's a lot of people. That's great news. Good to see so many inside. I'll just give you a few seconds more and then we'll we'll start. And just to let you know, if you can't get in Kahoot, don't worry. Just put your answer in the chat and I'll see it as well. Okay. Um, the number is Roselia. It's 7460388. Hemel is Will this live remain in the channel? Yes, it's live. It remains recorded in YouTube and Facebook, so you can go back later and watch again. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Milda. 7460388. Rona, you've just joined. Jing Z, you're just in Jing. Nice avatar. Excellent. Good. So let's begin. 
121 people. Good. We're going to start. The economy. Rising prices means a higher rate of stagnation, inflation, deflation, unemployment. You've got 30 seconds to get the answer. Rising prices means a higher rate of stagnation, inflation, deflation, unemployment. Forty-eight. Well done. The, yes. So rising prices is the higher rate of inflation. Great. Remember stagnation. Stagnation is where things are stuck. Prices are not going up. Prices are stuck. The economy is stuck. That's stagnation. Um, deflation is where prices go down. And unemployment is people without a job. Well done. Let's check. The leaderboard. Uh, Madina, 900. You're at the top. So you were the fastest. Ellie, second. Miriam, third. Well done. Question number two. This is a small and blank car that uses little petrol. Economy, economical, economic, economist. This is a small and blank car that uses little petrol. <laughs> that is a small car. Economy, economical, economic or economist? Well done. Oh, that's impressive. Economical. This is a small and economical car. Absolutely. Well done. Well done, well done. That's great. Remember, we discussed the difference between economical, saving you money or time, and economic, meaning related to the economy, economic policy, right, etc. Well done. The economy, no, that's a noun, so that cannot, that cannot be the answer here. It's economical. And the ec economist is a person. Let's see the scores. Oh, things have changed. Miriam has jumped to the top. Ellie is second, Mona third, and Shayla 19 places up. Question number three. Which of these is the odd one out? It's recession, downturn, depression, or growth? <laughs> so which one is different from the others? Recession, downturn, depression, and growth. Well done, Jane and Angela. Sam comments, you're there. Well done. Oh, that's a nice result. Growth is the odd one out because recession, downturn and depression all mean negative things where there is no growth, where the, the economy is stuck or stagnant or, or just bad. Growth, it's getting better, right? It's a positive thing. Excellent. Well done. Let's check the scoreboard. Oh, Ellie and Rox have moved up. Very interesting. Miriam still holding her own in fourth place. Raven, you're the highest climber. Guys, it's the last question. Times are difficult and I'm not sure whether I can weather the umbrella, sea, storm, forecast. Times are difficult, and I'm not sure I can weather the umbrella, sea, storm, or forecast. Oh, brilliant. So many of you have got it, right? To weather the storm, 
<coughs> Excuse me. So weather the storm. Imagine you're in a ship and there's a storm. Can you get through the storm? Can you get through the obstacles? Can you get through the difficult times? Weather the storm, right? I mean, in the recession, prices are rising, wages are falling. Oh, it's difficult, right? So can you weather the storm? Can you get through the difficult times? Uh, the weather forecast is predicting the weather. That's not the right answer here, okay? So well done. Let's look at the podium. Third place, Chia, well done. Second, Rocks, well done. First, Oh, Ellie, well done. Fantastic. Very nice to see. Excellent. Uh, well done, Ellie. I love my sound effects. Nice. Well done. Excellent. Top notch. Outstanding. Very, very pleased for you. Um, and I'm so pleased to see so many of you getting the right answers and uh, staying wide awake in the class. Lovely. So listen, let me just uh, recap where we've been, what we've done in today. We've been looking at the economy, right, today, helping you with the language, lots of ideas to talk about the economy in IELTS speaking and probably IELTS writing as well. We've looked at vocabulary, including acronyms like GDP, which stands for Gross Domestic Product, and GDH, which stands for Gross Domestic Happiness, right? Um, we've looked at things like saying it's a boon and a bane. It's good and bad, remember? Symbols we've looked at, like the good old piggy bank for investment and saving, um, Remember, we've got, and I've launched the new IELTS speaking course, um, Crack IELTS Part 1. Um, it's a new course. It's live now. You can go and see it. Go and check that out. We've done the news report. <laughs> we've done the listening. Idioms and useful phrases we've looked at in that uh, listening, and we've also done the Kahoot game today. Fantastic. I am just going to remind you, before we all wrap up, um, thank you so much for joining today. That if you want to go to the website later, I will put the notes in the uh, free live lessons. Go to the free live lessons. This was last month, but I will change that later. You can download the PDF. Just put your name and email and you can get the PDF. Um, I just ask for your email also because I can send you then more information other live lessons, links to useful resources that can help you with your IELTS speaking, okay? And also, as you're there, if you go, if you want to go to the online courses in the top here, you can check out the Crack IELTS Speaking. It's a new course um, that you can get and it's for, really for beginners. It's a short course, but it's going to help you with your... Um, Part one answers in particular. Part one is really important, right? It's your first impression with the examiner where they go, are they a eight or a three, right? They're, they're, it's that first impression. So that can help you. It's free, absolutely free. Um, I do believe in access to education. I do make my living through selling the courses, but I also want to make sure that so many of you can access free things. Of course, there's the YouTube channel, there's the website, but I think that course will give a little extra push to people, especially if you're new to IELTS, okay? Great. Our next live lesson for YouTube is the first Thursday, right? Remember that the live lessons are once a month, the first Thursday, which will be ba -ba 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 -ba, March the 2nd will be the next one, right? Next live lesson, March the 2nd. If you are in the gold course, you have a live lesson next week and the week after. On the gold course, 
which is uh, this one over here. For members of the Gold Course, you get extra live lessons just like this, but even better. And we do that next Thursday and the Thursday after. We're going to be really interesting lessons. I'm setting those up at the moment to let you know. So if you're interested, come and join us in the Gold Course. I think that's it. Listen, I'm going to wind up. Um, thank you so much for watching today. It's been a real, real pleasure. Just check if there's any questions as we wrap up. Wrap up. Dream says today's topic was interesting. Great. I wasn't sure because economy is difficult but important. Um, but Ashini, you're very, very welcome. Um, <laughs> the lesson was nice because of that barking dog. I tell you, that is my neighbor's dog. And it drives me up the wall. Really drives me mad. But, you know, it's very cute at the same time. So thank you very, very much. Love from Bangladesh. Love back to you from Spain, all of you. Um, thank you. See you soon. Uh, Elena, you're very welcome. Nice to see you here. Such an interesting topic. Lovely. Take care, everybody. I'm going to sign out. I'm going to give you some... I've got a new song for you. And um, listen, all the best. Take care. Keep warm. Stay healthy. And I'll see you next time. They tell me that I'm never gonna make it They want me to do something that could make sense They hate when I keep dreaming I'll be famous But I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna keep chasing I got all this potential that's deep inside of me But they hate when you're successful cause they try to be They sit there being just meant to because you're trying things And they just want you to settle and do the right thing So get a good job, don't slack off Wake up every morning, make a good impression on your boss Don't do anything that I wouldn't do And when you're making money, make sure you don't spend it too soon <laughs> Fuck that, I'll do what I wanna do I got a different path from everyone and that includes you who are you to tell me how to live life? In these times, it feels like nobody is right, yeah. So I'ma figure out what else we succeed and then invest all of my time into that and proceed. I need whatever the hell could make me happy. And I don't think you have a clue, what could that be? They tell me that I'm never gonna make it. They want me to do something that can make sense. They hate when I keep dreaming I'll be famous. But I don't give a fuck, I'ma keep chasing. They tell me that I'm never gonna make it. Something that can make sense They hate when I keep dreaming I'll be famous But I don't give a fuck I'm gonna keep chasing I think this life could be special If I get rid of the devils They think that I am a rebel I think they want me to settle There's nobody on my level They think that work is too stressful I think that work is essential The grind is all in your mental And I don't think you understand What I'll go through Just to be in control of my life soon All the negativity Man, I'm immune I don't really need a mask With all I've been through been making changes for the ages five ten year plans are contagious i attack that shit i'm tenacious and if you ain't get the fuck out of my way then got one life i won't regret it i will fight until i get it i'll look back one day from heaven and say damn i learned some lessons and say damn i have no questions i had fun in every second and the journey was a blessing yeah they tell me that i'm never gonna make it they want me to do something that can make sense they thank you so much guys take care see you soon Bye-bye.